feel stuck? Like that band-aid ain't coming off without hair stuck. Like my kid got their head stuck in the railing again stuck. Like I just paid a buck fifty for nothing stuck. All of us have been stuck at one time or another. Whether stuck in a relationship, a career, debt, there are many ways that we can find ourselves stuck. Join us as we move from being stuck to unstuck. It's been said that money makes the world go round. An extremely wealthy man was once asked, how much is enough money? And his response was, just a little more. That man could be termed as being stuck financially. Because did he have money or did money have him? What's your thoughts on money and material possessions and treasures and those types of things? Here's a common thought about money. If only I had a little bit more money, then I would fill in the blank. If I only had a little bit more money, then I would buy some more stuff. If I only had a little bit more money, I would take a vacation. If I only had a little bit more money, maybe I could save some money. Maybe save for retirement. Maybe save for my children's college. Maybe if, if I had a little bit more money, I could help out someone. Maybe if I had a little bit more money, I could give to charity. Maybe if I had just a little bit more money, I would be able to give and support the local mission of the church I attend. If you think, if only I had a little bit more money, you may be stuck financially. Pink Floyd had a hit song, the iconic rock band had a hit song called Money. And it really serves as a commentary on what our society thinks of money. Some of the lyrics of the song are this, money, get away. You get a good job with more pay and you're okay. Money, it's a gas. Grab that cash with both hands and make a stash. My favorite line of the song right here. New car, caviar, four-star daydream, think I'll buy me a football team. Money. Get back. I'm all right, Jack. Keep your hands off my stack. Money. It's a crime. Share it fairly, but don't take a slice of my pie. Money, so they say, is the root of all evil today. Roger Waters wrote that song, member of Pink Floyd. That's his commentary on money. So do you got money or does money have you? Do you control your money or do you wonder where it went? Are you living paycheck to paycheck or do you have margin in your life, enough to handle emergency, enough to be able to bless someone with a gift if they are in need? Do you look for opportunities to give your money away, to be generous? No matter how much money that you have, do you view it as a gift from God to be leveraged for the kingdom of God. Has just the mention of money in church made you a little uncomfortable? You know those churches, they just want your money, right? Is it a subject you avoid? Are you financially stuck? Financially. Here at Sharon Woods Church in 2023, we want to see you get unstuck. We want to see you get unstuck and flourish and thrive in all areas of life. So in this series in January, we've been looking at getting unstuck. In the first three messages, we looked at getting unstuck spiritually, unstuck relationally, and last week, unstuck mentally. This week, we're going to focus on getting unstuck financially, and then next week, we will look at getting unstuck physically. If you missed any of those messages prior. You can always access those via our website. The last message is always one click away on our website, SharonWoodsChurch.org. And then the rest of the messages from several months back are all archived. You can get to them on Sharon Woods Church YouTube channel or at Pastor Doug. Here's what we're going to do today. Here's my prayer for today. My prayer is, is that you would see what Jesus thinks about money today. So we're going to take a look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. It's a part of his message 
called the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to take a look at that passage, and I want you to see what Jesus thinks about money. And then, my prayer is, is that if you're stuck financially, that you'll walk away today with one practical step that you can take to get unstuck. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to read our passage, then we'll pray, then we'll observe a few reasons why people get stuck financially, and six ways that you can get unstuck. And then we'll end the service with one practical way, one step that you can make to get unstuck. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, this is Jesus speaking. He says, do not lay up treasures for yourselves on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? No one can serve two masters, for he will either hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Let's pray together. Lord, as we approach this extremely important topic of how we steward whatever amount of money or finances or possessions that you have entrusted us with, Lord, help us to really seek to understand, Lord Jesus, what you taught about money and what you think about money and the gift that it is and how you expect us to use it. Lord, clear our minds. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would minister to every single person in this room at their point of need. I also pray for the folks that are joining us online. Lord, thank you for those folks and God bless them as they listen in today. In Jesus' name, amen. So what are some reasons that folks get stuck financially? First, laziness. Proverbs 19.15 says, Slothfulness cast into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. So quite frankly, laziness, slothfulness, is a source of getting stuck financially. God designed us to work. From the very beginning, we were designed to work. The first thing that God told Adam was, tend the garden, take care of it, do some work. He told Adam and Eve, go forth, be fruitful, do stuff, go work, multiply, build a holy habitation of holy people worshiping in this holy place. They were to work at that. Able-bodied folks are to work. They're to be industrious. By working, you bless other people with the gifts and abilities that God has given to you. Just last night, I was talking to somebody at the chili cook-off, and they had a new plant manager come in, and this person was telling me that he was able to bless that person with his knowledge and experience and help him out. And so that person, by working, is being a blessing to other people. And so we're to work, and in exchange for that, he's getting a paycheck. So we're to work because ultimately our boss is the Lord. We work unto the Lord. So what are some reasons that you get stuck financially? Laziness and then look at covetousness. Hebrews 13, 5 says, keep your life free from love of money and be content with what you have for he has said, I will never leave or forsake you. Now we live in a now culture, a get it now, like we want our stuff now. And so we covet We want to keep up with the Joneses. We want to get the latest iPhone. We want to do this. We want to do that. It's interesting that this covetousness is pervasive throughout all of humanity. I remember the first time I went to Indonesia on a mission trip. We were out in a village sharing the gospel. There was no electricity in the village. So zero electricity, no running water. And as we were going from house to house sharing, I noticed that there were TVs in the houses. And so probably about a third of the houses had TVs in them. And I'm thinking it doesn't work without electricity. 
what is the point? So I asked one of my interpreters, I said, hey, yes, what is the deal with the TVs? And they, well, it's a status symbol that maybe if one day the village does get electricity, they have a TV. <laughs> we want our stuff. But here in this verse, what, what the scriptures are saying is, you should be content with whatever you have. Be content with whatever material possessions you have. And what is the reason it is given? It is says, for he has said he will never leave or forsake you. So if you are a follower of Christ, you have something worth more than all the material possessions in the world. And that's that promise that he'll never leave or forsake you. That's worth more than anything else. And so be content with what you have. What are we reasons that we're stuck? Laziness, covetousness, and then money mismanagement. Just plain old money mismanagement. You don't manage your money as well. In Matthew 25, verses 24 through 30, Jesus tells a parable. It's called the parable of the talents. And so a talent is a bag of gold or it's a sum of money. And so in the parable, somebody gets one talent, and another person gets five, and another person gets ten talents. They're entrusted with this, and they're supposed to put it to work and give the master who has given them these talents a return on his investment. And so the master comes back after a period of time, and two of the folks that have received talents are commended because they have put that money to work, and they have given their master a return on the money. The other person is rebuked because he did nothing with the money that was entrusted to him. He mismanaged it, and in this case, he, by not managing it at all. God expects you to manage your money well. And if you don't, then in this parable, it teaches that the Lord will rebuke you. Now, some folks get stuck financially because they've, honestly, they've just never been taught how to manage their money. Some people know very well how to manage their money. They just don't want to do it. It's just not a priority. So no matter how much money you have, you're to manage it well. How many of you today would like for a million dollars to just drop in your lap? Hands up everywhere. <laughs> One million dollars. Bam. One million dollars. That sounds, I, I'll be honest. Yeah. Sign me up for the million dollar drop in. I'm all in. Did you know that seven out of ten people who win a lottery of a million dollars or more are broke in seven years? Seven out of ten people that win a lottery of a million dollars or more are broke in seven years. Here's the whole cold, hard truth. If you don't know what to do with a hundred dollars, what are you going to do with a million if you don't know how to manage one dollar, what good would it to do if ten million dollars dropped in your lap? So there's an importance to knowing how to manage your money. What are some reasons folks get stuck financially? Laziness, covetousness, money mismanagement, and kind of akin to that last point, too much money. Some people get stuck because they got too much money. Too much money. Jesus tells a parable about a man in Luke chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. This man had it all. He had a thriving agricultural business. He had all kinds of cash. Probably one of the richest men in the world at that point in time, the way the parable is presented. And then he gets even richer. He has an abundant crop, so much so that all his storage barns aren't enough to fill or too, too much. They can't, it can't, he needs more room. And so he says to himself, well, what should I do? What should I do with all this extra money, with all this extra abundance? And he says to himself, well, I'm going to tear down my little barns. I'm going to build big barns for myself. And what am I going to do? I'm going to relax, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, that's a verse that usually gets taken out of context. You say, doesn't the Bible say relax, eat, drink, and be merry? Well, listen to what the verses that come right after that verse, Luke 12, 20 through 21. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul is required of you, and the things you've prepared, whose will they be? 
so is the one who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. So here's a money, here's a man who knew how to manage money. He'd done it well, he built a successful business. But cash had become the king of his heart. He bowed down to the idol of money and power, possessions. He was stuck on himself and what his money could do for himself. There's a danger in having a massive amount of money. Jesus said it is harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven than it is for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Now, Jesus was using hyperbole there. It would have been really funny to his listeners. But when he said that, his point was, is that if you have a massive amount of money, it, you, you can get stuck. You can get stuck. So these are just a few of the reasons that folks can get stuck. It's not exhaustive by any means. But now let's take a look at ways to get unstuck financially. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on heaven, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. So how do you find financial freedom? First point is, know that wealth is temporary. Know that wealth is temporary. Our friend, the rich man, who wanted to tear down his little barns and build big barns so he could have a whole bunch of stuff, didn't realize that. In the parable, that very night, he would be called to account. He would be required to pass from this life to the other. And God says, well, what's going to happen to your stuff? Job knew this as well. Look at Job chapter 1, verse 21. Job says, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every single one of us came out of our mother's womb naked. You weren't holding an iPhone. You didn't have a 401k. You didn't have a car. You didn't have a house. You didn't have a bank account. You didn't have nothing. You were as broke as a joke. And that's the way you're going to leave. That's the way you're going to leave. When your spirit exits this world, you're not taking any of your cash with you. You're not taking your bank accounts or your 401ks or your toys or your material possessions. Some of us think that the almighty dollar is eternal. It's not. It's temporary. You know, I, I did nine funerals last year. Not one single time did the father family gather around and talk about how much money that person did or didn't make. Not one time did the family gather around and talk about what was in the bank account. Life consists more than the abundance of possessions. It comes into clarity at the time of a funeral, the time of death. Nine funerals, zero mentions about how much money that person had. So, how do you get unstuck financially? Know that money, wealth, material possessions are temporary. And then secondly, you get unstuck by making deposits into your heavenly bank account. By making deposits into your heavenly bank account. Look at verses 19 and 20. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But, lay up treasures for yourselves in heaven. Make heavenly deposits where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. You cannot take your money with you, but you can send it ahead. You cannot take your money with you, but you can send it ahead. Did you know that every single person in this room has a heavenly bank account? What's yours look like? Are you making deposits? Are you laying up treasures in heaven? This is a special bank account. You don't need any FDIC insurance. It's 100% guaranteed. The guarantor of it is God himself. It'll never lose its value. So the question is, are you making deposits into your heavenly bank account? And you might ask, well, how do you do this? How do you make a deposit into a heavenly bank account? I don't have a routing number or an account number. This is how you practice generosity. Look at 1 Timothy 6, verses 18 through 19. The scriptures tell us to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure. 
When you are generous, when you are ready to share with others, you make deposits into your heavenly bank account. What's the bottom line of being a Christ follower? It's love God and love others. Love God, love others. This happens when we use whatever amount of money that we have to bless others and further the work of God's kingdom. So how do you make heavenly deposits? You're generous. And then secondly, you invest in God's kingdom. You invest in God's kingdom. When you invest money, like by giving to the FCO, to help Bible translators translate the scriptures into the heart language of a people group who has no access to the Bible, cha-ching, you just made a heavenly deposit. When you support a person working on college campuses who's going out and sharing the gospel and making disciples and discipling people, cha-ching, you just made a heavenly deposit. When you put a check or cash in the offering plate, your tithes and offerings here at Sharon Woods Church to support the mission of proclaiming the gospel and making disciples in this community through the power of the gospel, cha-ching, you just made a heavenly deposit. A portion of our finances, no matter how much or how little we have, it doesn't matter, should be invested into proclaiming and furthering God's kingdom, into helping folks in their journey with Jesus, into making disciples. That's how you send your money ahead to heaven, by leveraging your resources for the kingdom purposes. Now, it's a whole other sermon series. There are lots of other ways you can make deposits into your heavenly bank account. One is like by doing acts of kindness. Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water in my name to the least of these, you've done it to me, cha-ching, you just made a deposit in your heavenly bank account. But for today, since we're just on finances, that's where we're, we're sticking with the thrust of the passage. But I didn't want to say that this is the only way. Finding financial freedom. Realize that wealth is temporary. Make deposits into your heavenly bank account. And then third, it's a matter of the heart. It's a matter of the heart. Verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Ultimately, your finances are a matter of the heart. What you do with your money is a reflection of the condition of your heart. Now there's an old saying that says, when a preacher starts talking about money, he's gone from preaching to meddling. Because folks don't like to talk about their money too much in church. But there is no area of your life that is exempt from the lordship of Jesus Christ. And that includes your checkbook, your cash, your Venmo, your cash app, your crypto, everything. Why? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if money or the pursuit of it or what it can buy sits on the throne of your heart, then Jesus isn't there. Jesus wants all of your heart, every single bit of it. And that includes the arena of finances. How do you get unstuck financially? Realize that wealth is temporary. Make heavenly bank deposits. Realize it's a matter of the heart and also... This affects everything. This affects everything. At first glance, verses 22 and 23 seem kind of a bit out of place on this teaching of money. Look at them. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? What is Jesus saying? He's communicating that your finances color the entire portrait of your life. Just like the health of your eye affects your entire life, if you're blind, that makes a difference in your life. You won't be able to function and thrive and flourish the way you are now. You'd have to make some adjustments, would you not, if you were blind? And so being blind, you would have to make adjustments in every area of your life. 
And so what Jesus is saying is, is that these, this finance thing, this colors the entire portrait of your life. It affects everything. How do you attain financial freedom? Know that wealth is temporary. Make heavenly bank deposits. It's a matter of the heart. Your finances affect everything. And the next, a divided house cannot stand. A divided house cannot stand. Observe how Jesus punctuates his teaching on money. Look at verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. You cannot serve God in money. I didn't say that. Jesus said that. You cannot serve God in money. This is Jesus' mic drop. This is his bottom line of his teaching on money. You cannot serve God in money. You cannot serve God in money. It's either one or the other, but you can't have both. Your relationship with Jesus can't be over here, and your dealings with money over here. Jesus calls you to bring your relationship with Jesus and your money under the same spiritual roof with Jesus in control, with your money being just one of the areas of your life that is subject to the lordship of Jesus Christ. A divided house cannot stand. You can't serve God and money at the same time. You have to choose. You can't follow Jesus and follow the money. You can't follow Jesus without submitting all of your finances to him. Following Jesus and practicing generosity go together. If your heavenly bank account has a balance of zero in it, you may not be following Jesus too closely. If you haven't surrendered your money to Jesus, then this is an area of discipleship that should be a priority to you, because Jesus wants you to flourish in all areas of your life, including your finances. And so how do you find financial freedom? You realize that wealth is temporary. You make heavenly bank deposits. It's a matter of the heart. You realize that it colors the entire portrait of your life. You realize that a divided house cannot stand. And then lastly, very simply, focus on the basics. Focus on the basics, the nuts and bolts of managing your money. Now, what we've talked about so far has not addressed keeping a budget. It hasn't addressed establishing an emergency fund. It hasn't addressed strategies to get out of debt. It hasn't addressed real strategies to save for retirement or save for your kid's college. It hasn't talked about establishing margin in your finances. It hasn't talked about the this is real for me. The relationship between finances between a husband and wife. We haven't talked about that. Practical tips on how to get unstuck financially. From a nuts and bolts standpoint, we haven't talked about that. However, you can learn more about that at our free financial seminar that we're conducting next Sunday at 6 p.m. right here at Sharon Woods Church. You can scan that QR code if your phone's good enough on the screen. That QR code is also on your listening guide. That'll take you to a registration page. If you've downloaded our Sharon Wish Church app, which you should have, it'll take you straight to the registration page. If you scan that to sign up and you haven't downloaded our app, it'll prompt you to choose Sharon Wish Church as your church and then download the app. But this is the one practical easy to take step. Sign up for this financial seminar and then come next week at 6 p.m. right here at Sharon Woods Church. It's one step you can take. Some of you may be really stuck financially. You need to come. Some of you may be kind of stuck financially. You need to come. Some of you may just need a tune-up. You haven't really thought about your finances. Everything seems to be flowing good you should probably come. Maybe you're a financial 
spiritual superstar. You're practicing all these principles. You should come so that you could help others, that you could be an encouragement to others. Maybe there'll be somebody there that it just makes sense. God will pair you guys together, and you can help them out. You should come. So scan that QR code, or you can register at sharingwitchchurch.org under the events tab. You just go to the events tab and scroll down to the financial seminar, and that'll be the first step you can take in getting unstuck financially. So I know you want to be free. Everybody wants to have some financial margin. Everybody would like to absorb an unforeseen emergency because they have planned for that. Wouldn't it be nice to have a solid plan going forward, to be able to be more generous, to be able to freely invest in God's kingdom, to serve God, not to worry about your bills and how they're going to get paid? All those things. It's free. Brad is a certified financial consultant. He does an amazing job. I've been to several of his presentations, learn something new every time. It's just, it's just another free resource that we're offering here at Sharon Woods Church because we want to see you thrive and flourish in every area of your life, and that includes finances. So how do you find financial freedom? Realize that wealth is temporary. Make deposits in your heavenly bank account. It's a matter of the heart. It affects everything. A divided house cannot stand, and then just quite simply, focus on the basics. Focus on the basics. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, what a privilege to gather in this place. I was reminded as the snow was falling that you wash our sins white as snow. Lord, it's an amazing thing that you came, that you lived a sinless life, you sacrificed yourself on the cross willingly to give us a means by grace through faith to come into a right relationship with you. Lord, I pray for any person that's here today that's never taken that initial step of saying, Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. Lord, I pray that you would just place in their heart an insatiable desire to get that thing figured out. That you would Give them restlessness in their heart until they make a decision for you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray for folks in here that have heard this message in different ways, that are in different places with their finances. Lord, I pray that you would minister to each one of them at their point of need. Lord, I pray that the financial seminar that we'll have next week will be a blessing to many and will be the first practical step in moving forward wherever someone's at in their finances. In Jesus' name, amen.